In this video, we're diving into a fundamental aspect of web design, understanding the difference between absolute and relative positioning. Regardless of which page builder you're using, or even if you're not using a page builder and you're simply programming, stick along because I think you're gonna find this video helpful. Before we start, if you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and to ring the bell icon to stay updated with our latest tips and tutorials on web design. Okay, in CSS, there are five primary ways of positioning an element on a page. An element can be set to have a static position, a relative position, an absolute position, a sticky position, or a fixed position. I'd like for us to concentrate on relative and absolute positions in this video. But in order to understand these, I think it's important that we also understand static positions as well. And for you Thrive Architect users, a static position is the default way in which an element gets positioned on your page when you drag and drop it into your canvas. Um, a static position essentially lets an element sit on your canvas following the default flow of your page, which is normally to be left aligned to the top. Your, my left, your, your left to the top. And you can test this out yourself. If you drag and drop an image on your canvas, you'll see that it's going to position itself to the left-hand side of your page towards the top or underneath the latest element that you've dropped on your canvas. And if you drop another element underneath that image, it's going to do the same exact thing. It's gonna position itself underneath your image, left aligned towards the top. This is the natural flow of your page. Now, static elements can still change their position, right? You can have a text element be static, but have it sit inside a content box that is justified to the right-hand side of your page. Or perhaps you simply have your text have a maximum width of 400 pixels. But despite the fact that the appearance and design of our element can change, the natural flow of our elements is to be left aligned to the top. Okay, now that we understand static positioning, and if you have any questions, you can most certainly post them in the comment section below. Let's now talk about relative positioning. With relative positioning, instead of having our elements follow the default flow of our page, we're now creating a relationship between the element that we're editing and the parent container in which it sits. Let me just give you an example. Let's say that we have a text element inside a column. A column would be our parent container because it holds the text element that we're editing. And so our text element would be a child element because it has a parent container. If we set our text element to have a relative position, we're telling Thrive Architect that the position of the text element is dependent on the position of our column. Now you're gonna see that by setting my text element to relative positioning, I can now adjust my vertical and horizontal values. If I were to leave these values at zero, my text element would just behave in an identical way as if it was just static. It would just follow the default flow of our page. But I can also tell Thrive Architect that I want this text element to get pushed 50 pixels vertically and 50 pixels horizontally with regards to our parent container. And now all of a sudden by doing this, I have creative freedom to move and position my element wherever I want on my page with regards to the column in which it sits. Remember, our parent container. And if you're having a hard time understanding when would you ever do this, well, you're gonna use relative positioning to create layouts on your pages where you wanna have elements hanging off of the edge of other elements. Sometimes you're gonna wanna have elements sitting on top of other elements because breaking the natural flow of your page every now and then can lead to attractive designs at least if you know what you're doing. I do wanna answer a question that I think many of you may have, which is, what is the difference between moving an element by having it have a relative position and moving an element by using margins or negative margins? And there's a massive difference. First of all, I truly encourage you to check out this video that I did on margins and paddings if you haven't done so already. But in summary, relative positioning doesn't affect or compromise the position of other elements on your page whatsoever as opposed to margins which push or attract if you're using negative margins, surrounding elements. This means that with relative positioning, you can move your element wherever you want on your page. It's not going to impact the placement of other elements whatsoever. But when you're using margins, you will see that whether you're using positive or negative margins, you're going to be pushing or bringing with you other elements as well. Okay, now let's quickly talk about absolute positioning. I think this one's a little bit easier to understand. Absolute positioning works in a similar way to relative positioning in the sense that 
we are creating a relationship between a child element and a parent container. But instead of having our element move horizontally or vertically, we're having it sit in a fixed location. And if you're using Thrive Architect, you'll quickly see that these locations can be either the top left, top right, bottom left, or bottom right corners of our parent container. Let me just give you a quick example. If you have a content box, you can have an image sit at the top left corner of that content box or at the bottom right corner of that content box. And not just that, but you also have a little bit of freedom to push them around vertically and horizontally speaking. It's almost as if within the absolute position, you also get to adjust its relative position. Just remember that absolute positioning is all about sticking elements to either the top left, top right, bottom left, or bottom right corner of a parent container. And they're always gonna sit there. No matter the screen size, the screen width, they're always sticking to that corner. There's also one more thing that you should know, which is that if you want to adjust the C index of an element, it has to have a relative or absolute position. And if you don't know what the C index of an element is, be sure to check out this video popping up on screen. Absolute and relative positioning are essential concepts when it comes to placing elements on a web page. Understanding these positioning techniques can dramatically impact your design skills and user experience. And look, it's okay if at first you're not quite sure about how to start implementing these skills. You know, what really helped me open my mind a little bit and get a bit more creative was starting off using templates that Thrive Architect comes with and seeing how our designers were using these techniques. Now that you have the conceptual knowledge in your brain, take a look at some of our templates and how our designers have achieved certain layouts using absolute and relative positioning. And hopefully this will give you some more ideas as to how you can start using these positioning techniques as well. Anyway, anyhow, there's a link in the description box below that you can click on if you wanna grab a license for Thrive Architect today at the best possible price. And yeah, I'll catch you soon. Hopefully this, this video was helpful. Um, I appreciate your time as usual and yeah, I'll see you soon. Thank you, bye.